Hurricane Bianca's in town. No one is safe. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 RuPaul's Drag Race queens with the funniest confessionals. So it's a new day in the workroom. Um, I hate those new day in the workroom bites. But you've given great ones. I have? Okay. For this list, we're looking at contestants who cracked us up during their private moments with hilarious reactions and quotable one-liners. Which of these queens left you gagging during their confessionals? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Ginger Minge. My name is Ginger Minge, and I am a overweight, asthmatic, chain-smoking cross-dresser from Orlando, Florida. This self-proclaimed overweight, asthmatic, chain-smoking cross-dresser was always a real Southern belle. Graceful, charming, and slightly salty. All right, I'm glad you're back. If anybody had to come back and be my partner, I'm glad it's you. <laughs> That's a f***ing lie. I'm not happy to see any of these just walk back in. A member of season 7's Bitter Old Lady Brigade, Ginger's distaste for the younger queens and her affinity for attractive guest celebrities made for absolutely entertaining moments. When I lead our group in for our choreography rehearsal and I see Jamal standing there, I about flood my basement because that is one good looking man. Although her run on All Stars 2 ended rather quickly, she returned for the sixth season more polished, even funnier, and with a memorable confessional look. Girl. Freddie is cute. I would like to invite Freddie to a movie. The Glamour Toad was known to go in on some of her fellow queens, but she didn't mean any harm, except when she did. I don't know if he's ever seen Freddie got fingered, but... Uh, <laughs> Number 9, Vanessa Vanjie Mateo. I'm back by popular demand. This queen earned viral fame thanks to an insanely memorable exit quote during her first Drag Race appearance. Miss Vanjie, Miss Vanjie. Miss Vanjie. It was so spectacular, in fact, that she was brought back to compete the following season. But then, when the whole Miss Vanjie thing went haywire on social media, I made lemonade out of lemon. And she quickly became a narrator of sorts, providing commentary that was every bit as fun as it was incoherent. Whenever Vanjie's face appeared, we knew we were going to get the best version of events, plenty of laughs, and an iconic quote or two. Given her amazingly bubbly personality, we don't think it would be out of place to have her become the show's resident commentator. Um, she's trying. Do you feel good? I feel good. My heart will go on. Love you. Number eight, Willem. Rodham McQueer wasn't doing much. And I'm like, girl, Milan just danced circles around you and swiffered the floor with his taint. Back in the day, the confessionals were filmed in different outfits, and the queens were more vitriolic than funny in their comments. To do the whole song with no shoes, in closed-toed pantyhose, like a webbed-footed duck, LaShawn's drag mother is going to read him for not even starting the song in shoes. Willem was able to find a perfectly unhealthy balance between the two. Her deadpan humor and sharp wit always rose to the surface, as she read everyone to filth with the straightest face you'd ever seen. I don't understand why people take their wigs off. It's a drag show, not wig wars. The multi-talented drag queen, actor, and singer-songwriter wasn't afraid to list her entire resume and hype herself up. This level of narcissism didn't necessarily win her a lot of fans at first, but in the years since, she has earned a strong cult following. Yes. I won. You know, it's kind of a hobby of mine. Thank you, God, for all this bod. Number seven, Shangela. If you somehow haven't watched Game of Thrones yet, there's no need to panic. Shangela's more than got you covered. I told y'all Game of Thrones. If I'm going to take over the Seven Kingdoms, honey, I'm going to have to have some allies. This small-town country queen with big dreams outdid herself when she returned for All Stars 3 and gave us her most memorable confessionals yet. Kennedy and I go way back, and she is straight up, not edited, not filtered, not watered down. And those lips going to be pressed together, and the eyes are going to be clocked, and you're going to get two good double blinks. The way she compared the workroom dynamics to those of the Seven Kingdoms was spot on, hilarious, and solidified her narrator status. I'm trying to figure out, is Trixie Jon Snow or is she Cersei Lannister? Sadly, the Daenerys Targaryen of drag got the short end of the stick during the season finale. But in RuPaul's Funniest Confessionals race, she'll always be a winner, baby. It's just not fitting. Y'all told her on the internet it was funny. I blame y'all. Number six, Heidi in Closet. Maybe she's not the trade of the season. Ooh, what if I'm the trade of the season? <gasps> is she the trade of the season? Somehow, we're still not sure. 
This sweetheart charmed her way into fans' hearts with her endearing personality, which was front and center whenever she was one-on-one -on -one with the camera. I am a hiding closet. I am 24 years of fabulousness, and I'm from Ramsar, North Carolina, where the chicken outnumber the people. You know how RuPaul always says that the audience is most entertained when they can tell a queen is having fun? Well, that was definitely the case for Heidi and Closet. You can see her civil rights hair. Oh, Lord. But I keep going. I keep going, and that's important. Her complete cluelessness and brilliantly funny expressions cracked her up, which in turn elevated the comedy for all of us. The most important part to me in drag is to be entertaining, because if you're not entertaining, it's like watching the wall dry. Paint dry? Is that how you say it? With a very unique perspective and a laundry list of hilarious catchphrases, Heidi's narration heavily contributed to making season 12 phenomenal. Number five, Alyssa Edwards. I don't get cute, I get drop dead gorgeous. This drop dead gorgeous dancing queen quickly made an impression. It didn't take long for everyone to fall for the Texan's signature tongue pop, undying love for her own reflection, and Rolodex of quotable lines. I smell a star. Plus, the way she talked about her feuds with season 5's Coco Montrese and All Stars 2's Fifi O'Hara was always unintentionally hilarious. And then walks in Coco Montrese. The face crack of the century. Granted, some of Alyssa's funniest moments came from interactions with the other contestants. Still, we have the Queen's solo shots to thank for her most iconic lines. Back rolls. Number four, Katya. You may remember me as the lovable Russian hooker from season seven with a crippling anxiety problem, but I'm back with a refillable prescription for Xanax. She wasn't your typical comedy queen, but Katya's off-kilter sense of humor made her confessional some of the funniest in Drag Race history. A 90s beatnik doing a spoken word piece about her genitals. Tatiana's number is my absolute favorite. With flawless comedic timing, this seasoned star's flurry of jokes landed as easily as the Russian accent rolled off her tongue. Importantly, she was never really one to berate her fellow queens. I don't necessarily agree that Detox should be in the bottom. Her runway destroyed. National Geographic meets Italian Vogue meets Better Homes and Gardens. Instead, Katya mostly undersold her own talents and played dumb. Of course, we all saw just how intelligent and skilled she actually was. I definitely need to make a statement. So I just try to pound my vagina into that stage so hard that the building shakes. Naturally, her wit, charisma, and vulnerability in those private moments made audiences fall in love with her a thousand times over. Number three, Bianca Del Rio. I got bills to pay. I got dogs to put through college. There is not a single social media user today who hasn't come across a meme or gif of Bianca's crazy eyes in that blue and white shirt. I thought she was a fucking swordfish. She could flip pages in a book. The only winning queen on this list, her confessionals birthed some of the most iconic lines to ever come out of the Drag Race franchise. This challenge is the one that's going to separate the talented from the other ones? Whether she's mean or just incredibly honest is up for debate, but her insane comedic timing and biting razor-sharp wit produced some of the most brutal yet clever reads we've ever heard. Yet Bianca was caring and emotional at her core, with a motherly side that eventually reared its head in her intimate moments. I really think Trinity's come a long way, and she's totally opened up. She should really be proud of herself. I'm proud of her. Number two, Mo Hart. She's gonna gag you, honey. She is, I'm a production. Not only was she the narrator of both seasons she competed on, she also lived up to her name. Mo showed off her unique personality and became the heart of the series. America, my face is saying everything that you need to know. Com. A little girl from Kansas City that no one knew, she came looking for the crown. And while she pleaded her case to the judges, she also spoke directly to America. I'm feeling confident, honey, because this is what Mother Darling does. Give me a mic, America. She will work. She didn't win, but she definitely captured fans' hearts with her captivating commentary, endless positivity, and iconic catchphrases. I came to this competition with glitter and Jesus. Mo entertained the world with just her face and shoulders, proving that she is a star, and indeed, a production. That's a fact. And facts are facts, America. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Peppermint. 
This lip sync assassin's confessionals were funny, lighthearted, and hardly ever salty. I can not believe what they are asking us to do. Adore Delano. An abundance of charisma and quotable lines made her confessionals worthwhile. Bianca is doing amazing. She's fucking hilarious. She's everything I want to be when I'm 57. <laughs> She's gonna kill me. Gia Gunn. She was memorable for her hilarious reads and main character syndrome. My God, there's room for everybody. Let's just say that. Raja O'Hara. She redeemed herself on All Star 6 and was the narrator of the season. Akira C. Davenport. This pageant queen showed that she was just as witty as the comedy girls. Nia looks like a little Christmas bear that you press the button, they move like this. She just a boom. And then still like a walrus out of water. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Jujubee. I'm Jujubee. I love long walks on the beach, big dicks, and fried chicken. Some queens are narrators and others are funny but it's not often you find someone who can be both. Jujubee, however, proved that it's more than possible. She did it during her three appearances on the show as she made her way to the finals, and it was brilliant every time. Tyra has talent. Tyra is unique, I, I can see that. Nerve, she had the nerve to wear those ugly ass shoes, I give that to her. Charisma, I don't see any. She's just unt. In other words, she was the ultimate confessional goddess. Her scathing and perfectly structured reads, and often random but hilarious stray thoughts, made her one-on-one -on -one moments absolutely delightful. Glory holes in theory sound really great, but like, that's when you can get presents that you didn't want. Like, surprise, you have herpes. She's every bit as relatable as she is entertaining, and that was reflected in her talking head segments. It's no wonder RuPaul keeps bringing her back. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.